Here we have some sets. U, the universal set, is the set of all positive integers from 1 up to 10. A is the set 1, 4, 7, 10. B is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. C is 2, 4, 6, 8. So we draw three circles to represent the three sets, showing the overlaps. The first thing we should do is get the intersection of all three sets. Find the elements that are in A and B and C. So what element is in all three of them? Well, it's 4. Actually, it's the only element that's in all three sets, so there's only one element in the intersection of the three sets. Then we work our, our way out. We could look at the intersection of just A and B alone. What elements are in just A and B? Well, it's 1, the element 1. What about the intersection of A and C? Well, there's actually nothing in here, so I could just leave this empty. You could also just hatch it in like this, but I'll just leave it empty. What about uh, B and C? 2 is the only element that they have in common. Now we can complete the set B. We have 1, 2 and 4, so the remaining elements in B are 3 and 5. The remaining elements in A are 7 and 10. The remaining elements in C are 6 and 8. Now the universal set U is all the positive integers from 1 to 10. So you can see that there's something missing here. 9 doesn't appear in here, so we better put it out here. To list the elements in A union with B, we take all the elements that are in both sets A and B. So we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 7 and 10. So we list them separated by these curly brackets. As for B intersection C, we look at the elements that are in both C, B, and C. There are two elements that are in both sets. Those two elements are 4 and 2. A less B is got by looking at set A and removing B from it. So if we remove B from set A and write down what's left in A, we just have the elements 7 and 10. B less A is got by looking at set B and subtracting A away from it. So we just have the elements 2, 3 and 5. They're the elements in B that are not in A. C complement are, is the set of elements outside of set C. So the elements outside of set C are 1, 3, 5, 7, 10 and 9. U complement is the set of elements that are outside the universal set. Well, the universal set is supposed to hold everything that we're talking about. So what's outside of it is contains no elements. That's the empty set denoted by the Greek letter phi, or maybe it's pronounced phi. We can also write this as curly brackets with nothing between the curly brackets. If we take any set and unite it with the empty set, we just get that set. So phi is, contains no elements, so um, A union with phi is A. Here we have the intersection of B and C, which is the elements that are in both B and C. So that's everything inside this region here, these two elements. And we want to take this set and intersect it with A. So A is the intersection of A a with this set here is just this set here. It's just the intersection of all three sets, actually. It consists of a single element. That element is 4. Notice that it doesn't actually matter where we put these brackets. We can even leave off these brackets. As a matter of fact, we can shift those brackets to A intersecting B intersecting C, showing that the intersection operator is associative. It's just like addition of numbers. If we add three numbers, it doesn't matter which two we add together first. Um, to get A intersecting B less C, we look at A intersecting B, which is this set here. It's A intersecting B. It consists of the elements 1 and 4. They're the elements that are both in set A and in set B. And we subtract the set C away from this set. So that means we'd be subtracting the 4 away, and we're just left with this element. 
the element 1. In this next question we want the number of elements in A union with B. That's what this hash symbol represents. So I've listed the elements in A union with B here. So to get the number of elements we just count these elements. We see that there are 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 elements in A union with B. The number of elements in A intersecting B. Well the intersection of A and B is this set here. You can see that there are two elements inside it. Number of elements in B intersecting C is also two. We have the elements two and four, two elements there. Number of elements in set A is one, two, three, four. What about the number of elements in A union with B union with C? Well, that's all the elements in the three sets. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. The number of elements in the, in the intersection of the three sets. Well, four is the intersection of the three sets. We have that here. There's just one element. And that element is 4. What about the number of elements in B? We have 1, 2, 3, we have 5. The number of elements in A intersecting C is, is actually just one element. A intersecting C is this set here, and there's just one element in it. That element is 4. Um, finally, we want the number of elements in A intersecting B less C. Well, we did that in the first part. I've actually rubbed it out. Um, A intersecting B is this set here and we want to subtract C from this set. That means we're subtracting the 4 because the 4 belongs to the C and we're just left with the element which is 1. I'll just write it in again here. So how many elements are in here? Well it's just one element. So 1 is the answer here. The next thing I want to talk about is the idea of the Cartesian product of two sets. S and T are two sets. The Cartesian product of S and T, denoted by X, S, X, T, is the set of all ordered pairs, S, T, where S is in, little s is in, in the set S, and little t is in the set T. So, S cross T is a set of all pairs, S, T, such that little s, the first element in the pair, is an element of this should be set S, and little t is an element of t, so we get the intersection of S and t in, se in a sense. Actually, we can think of this as, as standing for the operator AND. So little s is in S, and little t is in t. Little s stands for a particular element in set big S. Little t is a particular element in the set t. So the small letters are particular elements. The capital letters represent sets. So here's an example. S is the set consisting of the two elements 1, 2. T is a set consisting of the three elements A, B and C. So S cross T is got by pairing each element in S with each element in T. So we take the 1, the first element in S, which is 1, and pair it off with the three elements in T. So we get 1A, 1B, 1C. Then we take the next element in S, which is 2, and pair it off with all the elements in T. So we have 2A, 2B, and 2C. Notice that we have six elements in total. For each element in S, we have three elements in T. So there are two elements in S. Um, so there must be 2 times 3, or six elements in S cross T. So the elements in the set S cross T are pairs of numbers. So 1 comma A is thought of as a single element in the set S cross T. Similarly, 2 comma A is a single element in the set S cross T. So the elements are not um, individual numbers or letters, they're actually pairs. T cross S is a different set. T cross S is got by taking each element in T and pairing it off with each element in S. So we start with A and pair it off with each element in S. So we get A comma 1 and A comma 2. A comma 1 is not the same as 1 comma A. So the first element in each pair in this set comes from the set T, and the second element in each pair in the set T cross S comes from the set S. But again, notice we have six elements, because for each element in T, we have two elements in S. So we have three times two, or six elements in T cross S. The cardinality just refers to the number of elements in a set. So the cardina cardinality of S cross T that is the number of elements in S cross T is the number of elements in S 
multiplied by the number of elements in T. Now we saw a different notation for that earlier. S cross the number of elements of S cross T can be written us using a hash symbol. So that's another way to denote the number of elements in S cross T. These vertical lines are sometimes used. So the number of elements in S cross T is the number of elements in S multiplied by the number of elements in T. Here is another example. A consists of the set with three elements, John, Peter, Mike. B is the set with the three elements, Jane, Anne, and Laura. A cross B is got by taking each element in set A and pairing it off with each element in set B. So each pair has a first element from set A and a second element from set B. So we, we, we start, start with John and pair John off with the three elements in set B. So we have John, Jane, John, Anne, John, Laura. Then we go to Peter. So we have Peter, Jane, Peter, Anne, Peter, Laura. And finally, Mike, Mike, Jane, Mike, Anne, Mike, Laura. So for each of these three elements in A, we pair them off with three elements in B. So we have three times three are nine elements in total. So the number of elements in A cross B is nine. The number of elements in set A is just three. The number of elements in set B is three. And three times three is nine. A subset of the Cartesian product A cross B is called a relation from the set A to the set B. So you can imagine taking a subset of A cross B. That means we could just pick out some elements from A cross B. We could pick this element out. This is one element. We could pick this one out and pick this one out and put these elements within curly brackets. And we would have a subset of A cross B. So any subset of the Cartesian product A cross B is a relation from the set A to the set B. So the first elements in these pairs come from set A and the second elements come from set B. So we have a relation between elements in A and elements in B, albeit some elements in A and some elements in B. We could use a Venn diagram to represent the sets S, T and S cross T. So we have to take each element in S and combine it with each element in T. So we get the element 1 comma A and then we go from 1 to B and we get the element 1 comma B and then we have 1 C and so on. Then we have to do the same for 2. We have to go and take 2 and run it through all the elements in T. And we get three more elements. So we have 1A, we get 1B, and we get 1C. Actually, sorry, of course we get 2. 2A, 2B, and 2C. So we get six elements. The next thing that we will look at is the cardinality of the set union. The cardinality means the number of elements in the union of two or more sets. Let's start with just take two, with just two sets. So A is this set here that consists of four elements. The dots are the elements. We they don't have a name, but that doesn't matter. Set B consists of four elements. It's four, we have four dots inside this set here. Uh, the universal set consists of one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight elements. Now let's look at the number of elements in the union of A and B. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 elements. Let's look at the number of elements in A. 4 elements in A. What about B? 4 elements in B. What about the intersection of A and B? Which is of 2 elements. Notice that 6 is equal to 4 plus 4 minus 2. 4 and 4 is 8. 8 minus 2 is 6. That makes sense because the 2 elements in the intersection were counted twice when we are counting up the number of elements in the union of the two sets. So we have to subtract out the number of elements in the intersection because these elements were counted twice. Of course, we can use a different notation. Instead of the vertical lines, which represent the number of elements, we can use this hash symbol. So hash A union, union with B is hash A plus hash B minus hash A intersecting B. It's just the same as this, just replace the vertical lines with the hash symbol in front of the sets. Now let's consider three sets, A, B, and C, and their unions. We're interested in the number of elements in 
in A union or B union with C. Notice that if we just add the number of elements of A to the number of elements of B to the number of elements of C, then we are counting the elements in the intersections more than once. So this element here would be counted twice. I just put two in brackets. This element is counted twice. Uh, these elements here are counted twice. But the elements in here are counted three times. Because elements in, say, this region here are counted twice, we need to subtract off A intersecting C once. So we need to subtract off this region once, because elements in here are counted twice. Similarly, we need to subtract off A intersecting B once, because elements in here are counted twice. And we need to subtract off elements in B intersecting C once, because elements in this just this part here of B intersecting C are counted twice. But what we have then done is subtracted off this region three times. Because this was this this region appears in the three sets A intersecting C, B intersecting C, and A intersecting B. So when we subtracted off the ones that I've shown in blue once, each of them once, we subtracted off this region here shown in green three times. But we don't want to, to subtract this off three times. We want to subtract off this region only twice. The elements in here are counted three times. We only want them counted once. So we have to subtract off. Um, be, because it has been subtracted off three times in in uh, this calculation here and, and this and this, it's been subtracted off one more time than, than we needed to. We only want to, it to be subtracted off two times. If the number of elements have been subtracted three times, um, we need to add the number of elements in this region so that it is only subtracted off two times. So we have three instances of it. It will appear in these three sets. That's A intersecting, B intersecting, C appears in these three. We only want it subtracted off two times. So because it's subtracted off three times, we have to add one instance of it. Anyway, we can check that this formula works by just doing the calculations. So we have 7 plus 8 plus 10 minus 3 minus 3 minus 5 plus 2. Working this out, we get 16. Now let's count the number of elements in A union, B union, C. We have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. So this is 16. So showing that this formula, at least in this case, uh, works. But it applies in general, as I explained earlier.